This is an appeal to all IMGs, or international medical graduates. Junior doctors in England are going on strike. Are you an IMG? Are you thinking of going on strike? Are you worried about what are the potential implications on your visa, indefinite leave to remain, GMC? In this video, I'm going to be sharing all, and especially why you should be joining the strike. Hi there, my name is Sisi if you're new here and I'm a Ugandan medical graduate and initially I was one of those people who were saying that I think I want to go on strike. If people are going to strike then um, I know my problems, I am an international medical graduate, I'm still on a visa, I can't be risking it. I mean if I didn't want to work in the conditions that we're working in or for the salary that's being paid then why not even bother to come to the UK and maybe I can't just as well go anywhere else. So I have since changed my mind and in this video I'm hoping to change your mind as well especially if you are like me and thinking ooh I don't want to strike but at the same time you're hoping the strike does go ahead and does work out. So wanting the strike to go ahead but you don't participate is like being on a ship where people are rowing and everyone is rowing to take you somewhere ahead but then you really 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 want to go where you're going but at the same time you don't want to participate and yet you're on the ship with everyone else. So in this way you're kind of dragging everyone behind and yet you're not getting there and also you're making it even harder for us to reach the destination. I would also like to add that as international medical graduates we are an integral part of the NHS. Foreign workers make up a huge percentage of the NHS employees in general, not only doctors, but in general. The NHS employees are a lot of us and I think we sometimes take ourselves for granted, we think that maybe they're doing us a favor, but they're not, they're not doing you a favor. You are in fact doing them a favor. Without us, the NHS could actually crumble. If I feel like it is already kind of crumbling actually, but it could be even much worse. Do be knowing that you're a big part of the system and this needs you. As we are a big part of the system, your voice also matters. And I feel like a big part of the junior doctor strike being successful relies a lot on whether IMGs do take part because we do take up a lot, a big part of the system. There are very many of us and if we do not go on strike then we're going to be undermining a lot of our colleagues who do go on strike and yet we're kind of hoping it works. Things are not okay in the NHS. So I've only worked for the NHS for only about four years but even in that time like things have gotten so much worse. When you look at NA and E wait times, all the statistics, it's all not going, looking well. So for instance when I was pregnant and I had a, I thought I had a miscarriage so I was bleeding heavily, I went to A and E and then I needed a scan and the scan was planned for like three days later. Can you imagine? I remember feeling like, what is this? Like, am I in the UK or am I in Uganda? Because for instance, in Uganda, I would definitely get an, a scan much quicker. That is on the private system, yes, but still like so much quicker. My dad was also recently in the UK, so he was here visiting and he needed A&E, like he collapsed and went to A&E and he was so shocked, he couldn't believe that he was in the UK. Because first of all, everything takes so long just to be seen, then when they finally see you, take your vitals and then doing a CT scan, all that. Eventually he was seen and it was all done, but it took so much longer, he was so surprised, he was like, I cannot believe that this is the UK. Like, it's supposed to be a first world country, or Great Britain, and it's kind of disappointing. So I think... On the, the biggest part of why you need to be taking part is that for our own health and for our own good because as patients we also need the system to be working because the NHS is great don't get me wrong I feel like I have really benefited by being a patient in the NHS and I think it's really great especially if you're critically unwell but if you're not it can be a bit frustrating and it's like the system is gotten to a point where everyone first needs to get really really like critically unwell and that's when they work on you even as doctors, a lot of us can't even afford private health care, so that means that you kind of have to go with the NHS. So this is a big part why you should be fighting for it. I think doing the industrial action, first of all, is the fault of the government. The BMA has tried to talk to the government officials, the health secretary, the politicians, but they're just not coming to the table. And so this is why it has come to this point. Do you love the NHS? Do you want it to continue being there? Then you need to put in what you can. Your voice also matters and see how you can participate. So as an IMG, things are already hard enough. Like you're more likely to be referred to the GMC. You're more likely to have complaints against you. You're more likely to have like problems at work. You're more likely to fail exams. Like things are really, like the things are stacked up against you. It's already bad enough. But then let the money be at least worth it. Eh? A lot of people say that, oh, actually, um, maybe the pay is so much better than my home country. So for instance, for Uganda, the NHS pay for a junior doctor, specifically once you finish graduating, is about 10 times, I believe, more than it is in Uganda. But on the other hand, 
the cost of living in the UK is equally 10 times higher than it is in Uganda. So please do be considering that and don't just say, oh, the money is enough because it actually it isn't, it isn't enough for all that you do. Is it greedy to ask for more money? Of course not. <laughs> of course, it's not greedy to ask for more money. But in case you're one of those people who are thinking, oh, do we really need more money? I'm going to give a few reasons why I think we really do need more money. Number one is the high level of responsibility and the workload. The responsibility as a doctor in the NHS is out of this world. <laughs> it's too much. The workload is too much. Eh? Like the kind of things that you have to do because the quality of care is so high for every patient. It's so much. So for instance, you consider that maybe if you are back home, you are seeing like 20 patients in one day, one doctor. But here you see only 10. For each of those 10 patients, the work is too much. Like you have to see the patient. You have to, sometimes you have to do the bloods, go to the lab, take the bloods, come back, interpret them. And then you have to speak to family members. You have to speak to the nurse. You have to speak to the OT. You have to refer, if you want to refer to like salt or any other like person you have to do that yourself like it's so much and you're doing this for every single patient so this is why people are frequently having to leave work late come much earlier like the workload is honestly too much on top of that the responsibility is also too much i remember being on the team when we had to do like maybe met calls or like crash calls someone has a cardiac arrest and it's your responsibility to bring that person back to life <laughs> can you believe it who else has to do this like it's matters of life and death currently i work in psychiatry and it's kind of like your responsibility to determine I mean, whether this person is, let's say, if they're suicidal, are they actually going to kill themselves? Will they do it? Will they not? It's up to you to judge, like, are you a forward tailor? No, you are not, but you're expected to do that. Because if this person should go ahead and end their own life, and you, maybe you are the last person to see them, like you're the last doctor to see them, you have a case to answer. You have to go to the coroner's court. So it's a lot of mental and physical work responsibility and stress and at the least we deserve is a salary that's enough to at least cover your basic needs some doctors are even having to go to food banks some doctors are having to go to baby banks for like baby stuff and things like that and i think it's not right even i have considered because i'm maternity leave right now and i'm looking at the price of things i'm like but am i really that broke or is it all in my mind but then i'm like no I think I am. Um, number two is the years of education and training. We go through so much education and training, so many exams, like first of all, undergrad alone is just five years. And then you have the F1 year or the internship year. And then you have the F2 year. And then you have core training, higher training. Like it's endless. When does it end? Eventually it will end, I guess. But basically, I think this is a good reason enough to also demand more pay. Number three is the cost of living. The cost of living crisis is affecting everyone and doctors are humans too. And having to appreciate doctors, for instance, by things like clapping for us, like in the pandemic when they're clapping for NHS workers, like that's not going to pay your bills. When you go to the shops, they're not going to accept some claps for like maybe some bread and milk, like they actually want cash, guys. <laughs> The next thing is market demand. So the demand for doctors is much higher than the doctors available. So all doctor jobs are currently on the shortage occupation list. So that means that we don't have enough doctors. So if you want to encourage more doctors to come, like who wants to be training in this system or who wants to be working like this if you're not being paid enough? So the shortage is going to get worse and worse if doctors are not being compensated at least fairly. This is where a lot of British medical graduates and doctors in general find end up leaving the NHS, going into private sector. Some are going to Australia, they're going to Canada, and who's that going to live then? If you're an IMG and you're thinking you're happy to be here, then um, think again, because imagine if everyone lives and then you stay, this just leaves even more work for you, and yet you're going nowhere, do be thinking about this. In terms of how the industrial action can affect your ILR and visa, well, taking part in industrial action is not illegal, so it is legal to be taking part in this. Indefinite leave to remain will be affected by periods of absences from work that are unpaid. For instance, if for any reason you took unpaid leave, that can affect your ILR. However, it's an exception if the unpaid leave is due to industrial action. And also, sick leave, I made another video on that, which I will link up here. But really, it's not going to affect your indefinite leave like that. So don't be afraid of that. An unauthorized absence of more than 10 working days consecutively, however, can affect it. If you're absent from work for 10 days consecutively, for more than 10 days, then your employer might have to inform the home office. And so it can affect you. So this is why, well, at the moment, the strike has been announced for only three days. And if everyone takes part, then we don't have to go longer than the three days. The problem is if some people take part and others don't. And so therefore, maybe junior doctors don't work and 
it doesn't seem like there's a big difference and then we continue and continue and it gets dragged out that's when it will weaken the whole thing eh? if everyone does take part or as many people as possible do take part then there's a higher chance that it's going to be more successful and hopefully only the three days are enough i'm just hoping just the three days are enough if you do take part in the industrial action or the strike then you have to inform health education england that is if at all you are a trainee and you're sponsored by hee like myself so you just have to inform them via their reporting form and i understand that according to the bma and all the lawyers that they've brought because there are some they had a webinar in which there was an immigration solicitor who came and answered all the questions and also their website has a lot of information and they're saying that you don't inform hee however it doesn't mean that they're going to um, they can't inform the Home Office, but it's not like it's going to affect your ILR in future or even your visa. Your visa will not be cancelled because you've taken part in industrial action. Your salary might get less because sometimes they might not pay on the days of, of the strike. There's a reduction in your salary. If that reduction in pay is due to industrial action, then it's not a problem. Like, it's not a reason for them to be cancelling your visa. I will have to add also though that I am currently on maternity leave so that means I cannot strike. I did ask and find out if it's possible but it's not because it turns out you have to be working to strike. <laughs> so that means that I can't actually participate and I'm hoping that I can do my best by just sharing the word because if I was going back to work or if by the time I'm going back to work we are still going through this striking business then I'm definitely going to participate because it's really not enough like the salary is not enough. It used to be, but it's not anymore. So, for instance, I currently am on maternity leave and I'm going back after only about seven months. And I'm entitled to a whole year, guys. And it's really painful for me to have to go back. But the reason I'm going back is because I can't afford it. I can't afford to stay any longer back home. Like, I have to I have to go back to work. And I think it shouldn't be like that for doctors. Like, we go through so much already at work. And we should be compensated at least to live a reasonable lifestyle. So we're not even asking for a salary increase, but we're asking for a pay restoration. So over the past 15 years, the doctor's salary has reduced by about, I think it's 26%. So it's just making the money back up to the level of inflation. And if another, if you're an IMG as well and you're thinking you're happy with it because where you're from it's so much worse, you might have to remember that the reason it's better here than it is in your home countries is because the people who came before you probably took part in industrial action to help to raise the salaries to the level of in line with inflation. Because if I look at the salaries, let's say in my home country, when I look at them, they've been like that for years and years and years. So at some point they were enough, but it's because they've never gone up to the level of inflation as well. You might have traumas from your past country where when you strike, so for instance in Uganda, in, in my year we did strike. So people were striking every year basically. So interns specifically used to strike, like every single year. I don't know if they still do it. But every time you'd strike, first of all, they'll threaten you and then they might not even pay your money anyway. And then you have all these arrears and then you just get frustrated and give up. So I feel like in the UK, there is more hope that actually if we all participate then it's probably going to give us a stronger case and then hopefully we get the pay restoration that we deserve let me know are you an img are you a doctor are you thinking about the strike what are your thoughts on this if you like this video give it a like liking this video also helps it to spread to more people and remember we want more people to be able to participate to give us a stronger case so also on that note also share it with all your friends that you know are doctors especially imgs and let me know as well in the comments anything else i think i've missed out that would be helpful for other imgs to know. Thanks guys. Bye.